Hey, welcome back. On the last couple of videos, we built this React application as well as our web API in .NET Core, and we set up our SQL database. On this video, we'll be consuming our API, making HTTP requests to retrieve, create, edit, and delete our expenses. Also, keep in mind that I will be posting the link to the repos in the description below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and let's get started. Let's go ahead and open up our front end project and open up a terminal so we can click right here on terminal, new terminal, and let's install Axios, npm install Axios. Axios makes it really easy for us to make HTTP requests. So this is why we're gonna use it. All right, so once it has finished, let's go to source and open services and open expenses. And right here, we're gonna be using Axios to make our actual API calls for all of these. So let's import it. Port Axios from Axios. Now let's create an instance. So we can do const Axios instance equals to Axios that create. And right here, we're going to have the base URL. So we need to look for that. For, for that, the easiest way to do this is let's go back to our web API. Let's run that and let's see what the actual URL is. All right, so I'm back at the web API and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it and we're going to see what the path is. So right here we have localhost colon, this is a port. And then we only have one controller. That means it's going to be this slash expenses. Another way you can check it out is say you do this get expenses, you try it out, you execute it. And right here, it's going to give you the request URL. So we know this is the base URL for us. So let's copy that and let's go back to our front end. So back at our front end, let's paste that path in there. Keep in mind, everything for us is under the expenses path. That's why I'm leaving this here. If you were to have different paths, then you will remove that and have the base URL like this. But for us, everything falls under expenses. So I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay, so now we're ready to make our first API call. So let's get rid of this thing that we don't need anymore. And let's actually make our HTTP request. So we're gonna, the response is gonna be a data object. And we're gonna say, this is wait, Axios instance, that get. And right, we're gonna hit that get endpoint. And we're gonna be dispatching the response. So the data object. Cool, let's do an NPM start now. Our application is running. However, I don't see any expenses. So let's hit F12, see if we find any errors. Let's go to the console tab and we can see that the request has been blocked by course policy. And to fix this, we gotta go back to our web API and add a policy. So let's do that next so that we can make such request. Back at our web API, let's stop the application from running. Let's expand this and open startup. And right here under configure services, we're going to we're going to add a policy. So let's do services that at course. We're going to pass in options. And we're going to name it options that at policy. We'll name it expenses policy and let's do a builder and inside here we can do builder that with origins and we'll use a wildcard we'll do allow any origin any header, there you go, any header, allow any method, there you go, cool, semicolon, semicolon, and in order for this to take effect, we got to add it to the pipeline, so on the routing, we can do app that use course, and let's pass the name, so we do Expenses, policy, and semicolon. Save that, and let's run that application again. 
So we shouldn't have this issue anymore. If we go back to a browser and refresh, we should see the expenses being displayed. So let's go back to the browser. All right, so let's open a new tab and paste that in there, localhost 3000, and there you go. We have student loans and we have food. And if we go to Redux Dev Tools, we can see the set expenses was ID of one and ID of three, student loans and food. And if we go right here and we do a tryout, we see that that's exactly what we have in our database. So this is really cool. And now that we know that this is working, we can go back to our code and have HTTP requests for creating, editing, and deleting our expenses. So let's go back to the front end. All right, so back at the code, let's have calls for the rest of these, deleting, editing, and creating a new expense. So what we can do is we can do const data equals to await axis instance that post Oops, and then the first one is part of the path, so we're just gonna leave it empty, and then we're gonna pass the expense, semicolon, and then the payload will be the actual response, which is data, and save that. For edit expense and delete expense, we can just copy this thing, and right here we can do, we'll do put, and we don't need to get the data because we already have the expense. So it should be fine. And let's do the same thing for delete. So delete, we pass an expense and that's it. We don't need anything else. So I think with this, we're pretty much done. So save that and let's go back to the browser. So I'm gonna do control F5 to clean every any kind of caching. And let's try to add a new expense. So let's do adding out, let's do 15 and click add. And it didn't add it. So let's hit F12. Let's go to the network tab and let's do it again. So we get a 400. And if we go all the way down to the request, we're gonna see that we're sending amount as a string. So this is causing issues for us. So we need to fix that. We get, we get we need to make sure that we're sending a number, not a string. So let's go back to the code and fix that. Back at the code, let's open up the form. And right here, this is a guy causing issues for us. Amount is being converted to a string somehow right here. So let's make it be a number. So let's wrap it in number and same for this guy. Since this will have the same issue. So wrap it in number and let's go back to the browser now. All right, so let's refresh the page. There you go. And let's try it doing eating out. Do 15 bucks, click add. And we have it right here. And say we change it to 1256. We click save and it got saved. Let's try to delete it now, see what happens. We click and delete, nothing happened. Let's do F12, see what's going on. Let's click delete again and we're getting a 415. And if we scroll down here, we don't see the request payload. So let's go back to the front end and fix this because the delete is a little bit different the way we set up the request. So let's let's fix that real quick. Okay, so back at the code in the delete function, this is the issue we have. So Axios has, works a little different, the put and the post from the delete. The delete takes a URL and it takes a config object. So we're going to do data and then we're going to take everything that is inside expense. So we'll do the spread operator and do expense and Alt shift F to auto format this and we're going to save it and let's go back to the browser and test this one last time. All right. So back at the browser, let's click edit on one of these and let's click edit, see if it works and it's gone. Great. This is awesome. So everything seems to be working pretty good. So let's do student loans. Let's do 100, add, let's do eating out, 10 bucks, add. And if we go to our dev tools and we check the state, we're gonna see all the different IDs being created. And let's delete some of these, let's delete this one, let's edit this one to be $1.55, save. And actually let's change this to gas and it seems to be working fine. Cool.
And with this, we have reached the end of this video. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I hope this series of videos were helpful to you. I know there was a lot covered to the series, so feel free to go back and revisit any part. The more you practice building applications, the better you get at it, and obviously you will get more experience as you go. If you find this video helpful, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you all in the next one.